Now, if you're serious about making money online, then you wanna listen to this. I've achieved over $15 million by dropshipping products online, and I started this business model back in 2017. Now, we're still today in 2024, achieving millions of dollars with dropshipping. Now, the whole purpose of this video is to give you my exact blueprint and system that you can replicate for your own success through the dropshipping business model. Now, you might be wondering, what do I want in return if I'm given all of this crazy value for free? And all I ask for is for you to like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave any support that you want, whether it be by commenting or sharing the video. This is one of the stores that we took from zero to $2 million in just one year. And I wanna show you the kind of results that we got with this store. But as you guys can see, if we look at the most important things, which is the online store conversion rate, it's at 3.8%. The industry standard is around about 2%. So we're way over that, meaning that what we teach in terms of website conversion actually works. And if we look at the average order value, it's $55. So it means that we've got enough room to create good profit margins. Now for stores like this, we typically make around about 23 to 28% profit on these stores. Now you can also see by looking at the graph, we took it from $0 to literally $1.8 million in around about a year's time, which is insane. Now, if you really want to, you could also at the end of this video, go through all my old videos when I first started this channel back in 2018 and see some live case studies that I showed on this channel back in those days as well. Now I'm gonna be demonstrating this whole process using a Miro board. So I'll leave it linked in the description so you guys can also view it. And if you appreciate that, smash the like button. Now the most important thing is you're gonna be hosting your dropshipping business on Shopify. Now Shopify is the company you're gonna to use to actually host your website. Now that's gonna move on to what theme should you use for your Shopify store. Now if you're gonna be using a free theme, which most of you are, you're gonna to wanna to use the refresh theme. It's completely free to use and you can get some really nice looking one product stores out and general stores. Now there is actually a better alternative to this that I'll get onto in a minute. Now the next theme is a paid option. So if you wanna use a paid option and obviously with a paid option, you're gonna get more benefit. Then there's something called the Shrine theme. We've been using this now for around about a year and a half. Now that theme is superior based on what it can offer you and the customizations and the upsells and cross sales that this team has built in. Now the best option for 95% of you guys watching this is the AI store builder that I made. Now I invested over $50,000 in creating an AI store builder for Shopify. So what this AI store builder will do is it'll create you a drop shipping store for what niche you want and it will pre-upload 10 winning products to that store and it will create the landing pages, your logos, your FAQs. It will do 80% of the hard work for you and it will also automatically upload my free theme to your store, which is really, really good. It's designed to convert. So in my opinion, for 95% of you guys, you should be using the AI store builder. It's completely free to use, so make sure you use it. If you're more of a professional and you're doing some bigger numbers, the Shrine theme is definitely the best option. Now let's talk about how to create your dropshipping brand name. The best option is using ChatGBT 4.0. It's completely free to use. Tell ChatGBT what industry you're looking to sell in, what type of audience you're looking at, and tell them that you want a brand name making, but you wanna make sure that the domain name is available to buy. You don't want ChatGBT to make your brand name, but it's not available to buy as a domain. So you have to tell it, this is my audience, this is the niche I'm in, this is what I'm looking to sell, make me a brand name, but make sure it's available on Google domains or Shopify domains. Now let's talk about logos. Now if you're using the AI store builder, then it will do the name and the logo for you, but if you're not, then you can use Canva. Canva's amazing, Canva Pro is cheap and it's a must have, in my opinion, for any dropshipping business owner. It will help you create logos, it'll help you create images, it's an all-in-one package for the creative side of a dropshipping business. Business. Now, if you just want to go for a font type logo, then font space is very good. You can enter the brand name and it will give it that cool looking crazy font that you could use just as a simple logo. Or if you want to take it up a notch, you can use a company like Pixelart that will create you a nice looking symbol for your logo. And then you can use that for your drop shipping store. Now let's talk about the must have apps that you need for crucial success in the start. So the first app is the most important, Zendrop. Now remember, as a dropshipping business owner, you're taking advantage and using the leverage of not having to look after your logisticals, which means the product and shipping it out. But that means that it's the biggest flaw in your business because you don't have control over it and you're overlooking it and overseeing it. You need to make sure you're using a partner that you can trust. 
because this is technically the biggest opportunity in your business, but also the biggest bottleneck in your business. And I can tell you so many horror stories that I've had with this part of my business because I've used the wrong people. Now, the company that I use for all of my brand new drop shipping stores is a company called Zendrop. This is the company that will be the middle person between you and your supplier and you and your customer. Now, their goal is essential to you because they're gonna make sure that the product quality meets the match of the description so you're not getting customers with broken products. It doesn't match the description. They're also gonna make sure that they get quick shipping time. So Zendrop, on average, gets your product to your customer within four to 14 days, which is really good as a drop shipping business. Now, they're not gonna be cheaper than AliExpress. You're gonna have to pay a small premium, but in return, you're gonna make sure that you're speaking to English people, so you don't have to worry about speaking Chinese or miscommunication. They also have something very important, which is a good refund policy. So if the product arrives to your customer broken or it doesn't match the description, they're gonna refund you and you don't have to worry about taking the hit yourself. And that is probably the most important part of the dropshipping business, making sure that if things go wrong, they're actually gonna get refunded if it goes wrong. Now, the next app is gonna be OmniSend. Now, OmniSend is an email marketing app, so this will let you send emails out to people that have added to the cart but not checked out. If they've ordered a product from you, you're gonna update them with how their order's going, where is it? So email marketing is a crucial backbone to customer support. Also, reconverting traffic that didn't convert the first time around. The next one is Tidio Live chat now this is a live chat app that you can have on your website and this is really good for upsells cross sales discounts conversion and again customer satisfaction so again it's another free app but it's crucial if you want to operate as a business not just some small drop shipping store that doesn't care about their customers the next app is la reviews this allows you to import reviews from aliexpress to your store to help you with credibility and trust. The next one is Gelato. Now, Gelato is a POD app. It also allows you to add print on demand products to your store. Now, some of the biggest dropshipping stores in the world have a hybrid between print on demand and normal dropshipping. They sell both on their store. So you can do both using this app. Gelato for POD, Zendrop for normal dropshipping. So that gives you the opportunity to do both types of products on your store. And again, those are the crucial ones that you must have as a beginner when you start out. Now let's talk about payments, accepting online orders and getting paid. Now you can use Shopify payments. That's gonna be through Stripe. Now, when you activate this in the settings, this will be Shopify collecting the payment using Stripe and they will pay it out to you. So Shopify Payments is the first company we recommend and then also allowing PayPal on the side. So you'll have Shopify Payments and also PayPal. Those will be your payment capture providers to allow you to take payments through your online store. Now, I'm fully aware that some of you guys watching this are gonna say, well, I can't use Shopify payments or I'm in a country that doesn't support one of these providers. Now, if that is the case, then I'll leave a link in the cheat sheet to a blog forum that Shopify made that will actually give you a list of countries that you might be in. And if you click the country you're in, it'll actually give you the best recommended payment provider for your native country. Now, if you live in a country that doesn't have these payment providers and you don't wanna use the ones that Shopify recommends for your country, then you could technically open an LLC or an LTD and then get access to this. Now, again, I will leave a link to the companies that I use for my LLCs. So if you do wanna get access to PayPal or Shopify payments or Stripe, you can get that through using that method. Now let's talk a little bit about product research and finding what we call in this industry a winning product. Now the winning product is essential to your success. If you don't have a winning product, then achieving these numbers that I've shown you will not be possible. Now I'm actually gonna be going through the whole process that we use to find our winning product that I showed you for that store that generated $2 million in just one year. I'm even gonna be showing you the product as well. Now, this part of the process is crucial to your success as a dropshipper. If you do not have a good product, no one's gonna to wanna to buy it. So the criteria is broken down like this. Number one, is your product a problem solver? Now, I wanna quickly go over something. Your product doesn't have to have every single one of these, but it is crucial to have at least a few of them. So you need to identify what is your product? Is it a problem solving product? Is it a wow factor product? Is it a convenience product? Does it add time back to somebody's life? Does it add more money to somebody's life because they're saving money over time with just one product? You need to identify what does your product do? So it 
it could fit into a lot of different categories, but those are the main ones. If you can't identify which category your product falls into, then you shouldn't be selling it. The next one is a good BE ROAS, break even ROAS, return on ad spend. If your product does not make at least $30, you're not going to have enough money to spend on ads to be profitable. If it costs you $20 to get a customer on Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, but you've only got a $15 margin, then you're already in a $5 loss. The point I'm making is if your margin is not big enough, and again, $30 is a good margin to go for, then it's very risky to make money. Remember, my AOV for this store that I showed you was $55, which means my profit margin was $30, or just about $30, which meant even if I spent $13, $18, I'm still making money. You also want to make sure that you're selling something that's evergreen, which means that even if you sell it throughout the whole year and you have a few bad months, you don't have to worry about, oh, next month my product goes out of season. Oh, next month there's no need for people to buy my product because they need to wait till next year. As a beginner, you need to be selling a product that you have time to sell. You don't have to panic about, oh, this product's now not going to be usable for people to buy. You also want to be selling something that you can sell three years in a row and still make good money. Now, the next thing you need to be mindful of, are you in a unique industry? Now, the product that we made all this money with, you can see it here. It is a motorcycle pan. So it's protective and it's also fashionable. So it fits into two different industries. But remember, most dropshippers wouldn't even think about selling this product. They would just think, oh, we're going to sell the shark slides. We're going to sell the back posture corrector. You want to be in an industry where dropshippers would be surprised that you're selling this product. Do you know how many people I told that we sold this product and they're like, what? You were dropshipping this product? That's the type of response that you're looking for from a fellow dropshipper. You don't want to show them a product like a flame humidifier and then be like, oh, I've seen that. We used to try and sell it. You want to be selling things that dropshippers would be like, oh, what the hell? You actually dropship that? That's the kind of product that you want to be selling. Now let's take a look at the competitor. The competitor is selling at an 8.5X the product price. We recommend a minimum of a 3X. That's way over what we recommend, which is really, really good. You can see that my competitor was selling this for $238. Now, although we were selling it for $60, $55, we were still really good on our margins, but our competitors were going even more crazier with the margins. And again, this goes back down to perceived value. Does your product have the perceived value of being worth $238? The best thing you can do, type your product into Google. If your product also sells for other competitors for this type of price, then the perceived value is obviously there. If there are five brands selling that product for that type of money, there's obviously a perceived value that that product could be worth that type of money. Now let's talk about the research methods to finding winning products. Now I break this down into databases. So when you find a winning product, you need to use a valid database. A database means a website or a program that shows you products. It doesn't mean they're winning product. It just means that that database is valid, meaning the products on there could be winners. You're not just going and shooting in the dark. So it's important to use a database of valid products. Now, the good news is I'm only gonna be showing you a primarily free method. You don't need to be worried about paid options. I'm primarily gonna be focusing on free methods. Now, the first method is the eBay watch count. Now, this method, we've been using it since 2019 and it still works today. You know, there's a saying, if it works, don't remake it. Just use it till it stops working. And the funny thing is, this still works today. So what it is, is it's a website called watchcount.com. And what it'll do is it'll show you the most watched items on eBay. So when you buy on eBay, you can click watch list or wish list. Now, what that will do is this website will then show you the most watched items on eBay, meaning that there's thousands and thousands of people that are watching these items because guess what? They're interested in buying it. They might be waiting for a payday. They might be waiting for the price to drop. You don't know, but if they're watching that item and there's thousands and thousands of people that are, then people are interested in buying that item. Now, the next method is the Pinterest method. So you need to create a Pinterest account, go to the top and go by, by trends, and then you can filter it by country. You wanna do United States. And then it's gonna show you trends at the moment that are popular in those countries. And you're gonna see loads of options come up, whether it be summer related, whether it be winter related. And if you click on one of the trends, 
you can then open it up and it will show you related pins, which is images on Pinterest of those items that are trending. And again, if you use that Chrome extension, you can reverse search on AliExpress and find the drop shipping alternative or the actual product. Now, the next method is one of the most underrated methods. And again, we've been using it for years and it still works. If you create an account on AliExpress, you're gonna be viewing it from a consumer's point of view, meaning that you're on AliExpress to buy as a consumer. But if you go to AliExpress after you've signed in and go to where it says the AliExpress Business Center, you'll see in the drop down menu, you will now view AliExpress as a business owner, looking to buy products to sell as a business owner. So AliExpress will now show you products that are making money for other business owners. So you'll see different categories like best selling products, products that are doing really well right now. If you click view more, it's gonna show you loads of products that are making loads of money as a drop shipping business owner for other people, and you can just sell those. And it even shows you the order amount, 1,000 orders, 3,000 orders. You wanna be selling the ones between 500 and 2,000 orders. Any of those are really good options. Now, the next really good option for this is the TikTok shop method. So the next method that you can use is the TikTok shop database. So if you create an account on TikTok shop, if you're in one of the following countries, US, UK, and a few other countries, you can use TikTok shop. Once you've created an account, you can go to get inspired on the left-hand side, click shoppable videos, and you can see videos that are making money for other people on TikTok shop. So TikTok are showing you shops that are making money right now with their products. Remember, as a drop shipper, you're just looking for the demand and you're looking to supply it through advertising and through your online store. The next method is the Etsy method. So if you go to Etsy, filter it by physical product, then shop by category like niche. You can go into lots of different niches on Etsy, filter it by Etsy bestseller, Etsy physical product, and you can use that Chrome extension again and find those products that are doing really, really well on the AliExpress shop, so they're a dropshipping product. And Etsy even tells you these products are making money because it'll say Etsy bestseller, which means these guys are making money with these products. Now, when it comes to the paid methods to finding winning products, you can use tools. Now, the tools that I'd recommend are ad spy tools. These tools will allow you to look at ads on the ads library, but it has information that the ad library won't give you. Now, the issue with the ad library is you don't know if those people are actually making money. The good thing with AdSpy tools is it shows you ads that are getting lots of engagement, whether it be likes, comments, shares, the ad spend is going up over time. These are things that the ad library won't show you, but an ad spy tool will, like Winning Hunter. Winning Hunter is the one that we use. A lot of other big dropshippers are using them because it shows you ad spend of an ad. So an ad on the ad library, it's spending more money over time. So if an ad has spent an extra $5,000 in the last, let's say two days more than usual, there's a reason why. You wouldn't be spending an extra $5,000 a day on your ad for the last five days if it wasn't making money. It would make no sense. Now let's talk about your product page. You found your product, you now need to create a good product page on your Shopify store. Now you've got something called the hero section on a website. So that's the main fold of the website. That's the first part of the website that you'll see. Now your job is to take that consumer through their hero's journey. The hero's journey is them going through a journey to them becoming the hero and buying the product. Now, if we break it down, you can see they've got a nice logo made it on Canva. They've clearly addressed the target audience in the name of the product. So you have to really call out your audience in the product name. They're using those LA reviews or a alternative to build up trust, 1,168 reviews. They've also got the payment providers listed here so you can buy it on a payment plan. That way you're gonna actually give people the option to buy if they can't afford it all at once. So this again is gonna help them get to their outcome. They've got a really nice offer here, 15% off plus free armor. So the pants need armor to be protective. So they're given the free armor with the pants. So that's a type of offer. You buy the pants, we're gonna give you the armor for free. That's an offer that will help get people to wanna buy. Because what if the competitor to this is not selling the armor with it? That makes you stand out to the competitor because you're giving them what they need with the product to work. Now, if we look at the other part of their website, you can see here the product explanation. So they're showing you images of what the product does and how it works. Then putting the armor into the slit parts so that it's protective. Then you can see they've used ChatGBT to create this info. It says here, safety and style redefined, woven with armored 5X stronger than steel, 
So they're already going over how protective this is. The same fiber that stops bullets, that's a wow factor phrase. So they've already put a wow factor phrase in the short description. Short description like this should be on your website to give people info, but to wow them. That's gonna wow you. They've also gone over how we've created gear that belongs in the Bond movie. So obviously James Bond. So they're, again, they're adding to that wow factor. Then they have a video explanation going over how the product works and it's showing it in a diagram format, showing the armor in yellow and the pan in gray. Then they go over even more benefits, comfortable, breathable, long lasting, perfect fit. Then they go into the review so that you can build trust with other buyers that have bought from this brand. Then they go over the FAQs. This is very, very important because most FAQs are what are on people's minds. So if you address them here, then it's gonna stop people from going away and not buying the product. Now, the whole point of me showing you this whole formula is so that you guys create a landing page that has everything this landing page has. When you're building landing pages, guys, if yours does not match this quality, then you will not get that conversion rate over 2%. So it is a strict idea that you have all of that in place before you start running ads to your landing page. Now let's talk a little bit about advertising, running Facebook ads, running Google ads to your website, to your Shopify store. This is super important because this is what's gonna bring people to your store to be interested in if you're selling something that they're interested in. So your goal here is to get the right targeted audience to your website so that they can make the option which should be, yes, I wanna buy that product. So this is where you're getting those targeted people to your store from. Now this is a little cheat code that I use that most dropshippers don't use, which is SME Rush, but I use the plugin which is called Ad Clarity. Now you can add your competitor store, choose all channels, year to date and US. Now SME Rush offers a seven day free trial and this plugin also has a trial so you don't have to pay for this. So if you don't wanna pay for this and just use the trial, I would definitely recommend you do this. Now what this will do is it will show you the top performing sales channels for your competitors. So you know when I showed you how you can add product name plus my Shopify to find your competitors, or if you found your competitors, the biggest ones on AdSpy or the Ad Library, you can put their website into SME Rush, find out their biggest top sales channel so you can replicate them. Now that isn't the only thing you're doing. You can see here it shows green arrow means they've increased their spending, which means they're scaling. So if you see here a green percent change, that means their ad spend has increased overall. So whether it be on Google, Facebook, whatever it is, they've increased it overall. Now, something else that this tool does is it shows you their top ad. So if you don't know what their top ad is, this tool will show you their top ad. So it'll even show you here an example. So it'll show you the ad, the ad copy, the ad text, the style of ad, is it image, is it carousel, is it video? Because instead of you guessing, is it a video that'll do better? Is it an image that'll do better? You can use this tool to figure out your competitor's top ads and you can take some inspo from the ad copies, the images they've used, the way they've offered the product to the client. You can use all this info in your creatives. What's the point of making a creative and guessing? You should always test images, videos, and carousels, but why shoot in the dark? Why not add these elements that are working for your biggest competitors and add those in the creative test that you're gonna be doing? It even shows you when they launch the ad, the ad spend and the views that they've got. It even shows you here the video, it shows you the publishers, the impressions, the stats of the ad. What type of ads, is it carousel, is it video? What type of ad copy and how many impressions did the ad get? Now remember, the ad library will not show you this information, but the SME Rush tool with the plugin will. So here we can see that this company makes most of their money off Facebook and TikTok. So why would I do Google ads if my biggest competitor is only doing Facebook and TikTok? I'm only gonna be doing those two platforms. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to run Facebook ads like a boss in 2024, I will leave a video here linked to my free Facebook ads tutorial. It's an over an hour long and it will go through all the nitty gritty stuff like creating a campaign, making your ad sets, making your ads, doing the offers and the creatives. 
I go over absolutely everything in this one video. So I thought, why recreate it here if I went through it all in this one video? So make sure you check that out at the end of this video. Now there is a cheat sheet section to this Miro board where I go into a deep dive on SME Rush that you can use for your competitors. It goes over the dashboard, over the metrics, how you can use it for Google Ads. Now I'm not gonna be covering it in this part of the video, but I'm linking the Miro board in the description. So if you wanna check that out, you can at the end. I'm not sponsored by SME Rush. I just use the software all the time to help me get advantage over my competitors and to give me a little bit of a boost start in my dropshipping stores. Now let's talk a little bit about the backend process, outsourcing, hiring to make sure that you're running an actual business and not just some small time store that you just started that'll take up all your time. Now these are the two platforms that I like to use for hiring. They're both freelancer platforms, which is either Fiverr or Upwork. Now Fiverr is a platform where you can find logo designers, you can find media buyers, you can find absolutely everyone on Fiverr. Now the only downside to Fiverr is the more skill it gets, like media buying, the worse the platform is. So I only like to use Fiverr for very basic tasks. Logo design, if I want somebody to create me a website if I don't wanna do it. If somebody wants to enhance my website or my landing page, I will do it. If I want some videos making, I will go to Fiverr. But that is the furthest I will go. Now, if you're looking to hire some serious talent, then Upwork is the best place. Upwork is where you create a job post. So let's say you're looking to hire a full-time creative person that will create content for your product and also edit it. So it's a creative specialist. They make the content, they edit it. Then you can put a job post out saying that's what you're looking for. People will apply to that job and then you go through their applications and their CVs and you choose the person to interview or to hire based on that information. Now, Upwork takes a lot more time to get applications through the door, but they are way higher quality than Fiverr. Remember, Fiverr is for the small tasks. Upwork is when you're really looking to outsource to really skilled people. And some of the best countries are the Philippines, India, Pakistan. Really try not to hire from the Western world because you will be spending a lot of money and sometimes the talent doesn't even match what you're looking to pay. Now, once you start to see success with your dropshipping business and you're starting to make money, this is how your dropshipping team or business should be structured. You have me here at the top. You have a product research team. You have a creatives team, which is creating content, making videos, editing videos. You have order fulfillment, which is your supplier or your 3PL or your fulfillment center. And then you're at the top. So you get these people to manage these tasks for you. So when I start a brand new dropshipping store now, I don't do the product research. I have a team that does it for me. They send me a list of products, I pick one. Then I also have a team that will create the landing page, that will create all the creatives, that will make the videos, that will edit the videos. Then they send it all back to me and I'm the guy that will run the Facebook ads. I'm the guy that will run the TikTok ads. Now, I don't recommend that you run a dropshipping business like this at the start. You have to be in the deep end yourself first before you can start outlying tasks to other people. If you can't edit videos, you shouldn't be hiring somebody. If you can't do product research, you should not be hiring somebody. If you don't know what makes a good creative or how to edit a good creative, you should not be delegating it. And the reason why is because if you can't do it, how do you know the person you've hired can do it? Because you don't know what goes into that responsibility. So you have to learn to master every single one of these first before you even delegate that task. Now, if you've watched this so far and you're really interested in starting a dropshipping store, but you're looking for a really, really in-depth video on somebody that will hold your hand, literally hold your hand like this and take you through the whole process, I literally mean from A to Z find products with you live, build a store with you live. Then I created a free course and I literally have just made this free course around about a week ago. That's around about five hours long. And I go through everything that I've just gone through with you now, but in depth, showing you share screen, the whole process guys, literally everything. So if you wanna watch a free course that will take you through the whole step and it's completely free, I'm not gonna sell you anything, then this is the video to watch. My free course, which will be linked in the description at the end of this video, and it will also be pinned on my YouTube channel. So if you've watched this and you've learned something or you've now been inspired to start a dropshipping store, or if you've learned something about dropshipping, then make sure you leave a comment telling me what it is. 
Make sure you like the video. Make sure we hit a thousand likes so you can get access to all my cheat sheets and resources that will also help you with your whole dropshipping journey. With that being said, guys, that's this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.